What's going on guys, Blazing Tech, and in today's video I'm going to be working on my new Mac Mini M4. I got the base model with 256 gigs of internal storage, and today I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through um, this Ugreen unit that I have, which is obviously a docking station, 10 in 1 as it says, and I'll walk you guys through what I'm doing and how it has a NVMe SSD drive slot here, why I picked it, and I kind of want to just walk through this and show you guys how easy it is to actually modify your unit and add this additional space. Granted, the million dollar question for me is what read and write speeds will the Ugreen allow the Samsung drive to operate at? Now, could I have gotten a cheaper SSD, uh, a different brand? Yes. Could I have gotten a smaller drive? Correct. I definitely could have. This drive ran me $129.99. So this kind of costed me uh, 200-ish dollars, a little more, a little bit less. And yeah, I mean, I'm going to put this off to the side. and It's not going to break my heart if you fast forward the video. I just kind of want to show people out there that have this machine that got the base model like me. I mean, first of all, this thing is tiny. Like, this thing is really, really small. Oh, the other thing about the Ugreen is that there's this little notch right here. I wonder if you could see it for the power button. Now, everybody's going to tell you, oh, just leave it on sleep. Um, I don't really do that. I don't like to do that. But, um, yeah, so we're getting a lot of ports here. And if you look it up online, you're probably watching this video because you've seen already what it has. But the port selection, or lack thereof, on this machine is actually kind of funny. So you get two USB-Cs in the front. I think it's three more in the back. Yeah, one, two, three in the back. HDMI, fine by me. And this is an Ethernet port and obviously the power. Um, I would have loved to have seen at least an audio jack given that this internal speaker is abysmal. And like my desk speakers, for example, I just plugged it in to set it up. And I wanted to watch a little YouTube video, and then I realized, oh crap, I can't connect this to my speakers. And, you know, this is kind of my budget desktop setup that I have. So, let's take a look here. Ah, yes. Another main reason why I went with the Ugreen, this one in particular. Well, let's, let's talk about the build quality really quickly. Okay, it's pretty good. It's not the same um, aluminum as the actual Mac Mini. Obviously, this is a budget model, so. But the color looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you. And then obviously the Mac Mini sits right here, like so. You have to line it up, and then just place it down. And yeah, that's that's what you're gonna end up looking like right there. Okay, just got it in the groove. That's not bad, guys. That looks pretty good. So, the main reason why I went with this unit, as you can see on the back here, is that you're using two USB-C's in the back, and that gives you the ability to have USB-A that theoretically run at 10 gigabits per second, so that's like USB 3.0 speeds, and yeah, that's, that's kind of why I went with this, and then you've got the cutout here to obviously power on the device. Like I said, I'm not a person that leaves my device just running. Um, and I know a lot of people that do do that. I think that that's just going to cause my computer to age a little prematurely. So I'm not of the camp to just leave it on. But again, the party trick here on the Ugreen is that you have a slot for the NVMe SSD. And yeah, let's go ahead and put that in there. So it did come with a little screwdriver. And this is a fairly easy and straightforward process. I'm going to just open this up and not really care about that, that adhesive from the box. But yeah, I mean, I've, I've been daily driving my Mac Pro 2009 5.1 for as long as humanly possible. I've, I think I bought that in 2018. So, I've put a little bit of money into it, not a crazy amount. Um, it's a 4.1 that's 
flashed to 5-1. Okay, so yeah, I don't know why they have that little, this thing. I'm not going to use it. I don't think I need to use it because my internal SSD, the Samsung 990 Evo, is just going to click in right here. I'm going to just go, and then we're going to use the spacer screw right here to attach it right in here like that. How funny. Well, there's the SSD. Ah, it's just incredible that two terabytes fits on here. Obviously, you want to be careful while you're handling this. Um, again, very, very simple process. I just want to point out that those little gold holes right there facilitate the installation of different size NVMe drives. Now, this is the standard size, but anything will fit. Just check the Ugreen listing and just make sure that the NVMe drive will fit. I'm pretty sure every single NVMe drive ever produced will fit into the Ugreen, but just trust me, but verify. All right, guys, so I'm glad that I read the manual a little bit. I kind of wanted to do this. I wonder if you guys can see, but on the screw, yeah, you can. You see how there's this little like rib in the actual screw? That's what the SSD is actually gonna sit on. So essentially what I'm gonna do is, you guys can see that gold thing right there. It's gonna go like so. So you see how the SSD kind of just sits in that rib. Yeah, just like that, oh yeah. The Sony ZV-E10 is a great camera. Yeah, you guys see what I'm doing there. And then we're going to screw it in. Before I had just screwed it down. But now, seat that right in there. Again, right here, you don't want to do it as tight as humanly possible. But you also don't want this thing to move. So yeah, right there is fine. So yeah, that's in. Again, the rib... Um, the SSD was placed in the rib of the mounting screw. Now let's put this back, like so. And voila, you are done. Your U-Green is now loaded with the SSD. And, okay, you had all the tools you needed. Very, very straightforward process. So this is literally the message that I got as soon as I connected everything, so. Let's initialize this, and you're gonna see right there, boom. Two terabytes Samsung Evo uninitialized. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna erase this, and let's go Mac OS Extended Journaled with that partition map, and I'm gonna write this as 2TB. Let will just call it 2TB, erase. Boom, check that out. So that was disk utility right there. So I just hit initialize and there we go. So that's our external SSD. Let's go get info. Two terabytes capacity available, two terabytes. And yeah, that's it. It's This drive now is ready to go. What I definitely like to do here is run all my photos. So now let's go to if you see if you see my storage and about this Mac you'll see this drive as well as the internal 256 now is this drive going to be the speediest for um, video editing etc etc probably not but granted now with this here if I have footage like the footage that I took unboxing this I'm gonna open it up in an iPhotos library upload it to the two terabyte drive that we have installed in my library, take the video out, the raw video, put it here on my desktop, do my editing here on the 256 drive with iMovie, then, you know, stitch it all together, get my video, put it on YouTube, and then I'll delete the videos I have here as well as the iMovie project. And you're gonna use that 256 as still your main drive, but this is just now has become kind of your big fancy USB stick that uh, it's just a glorified go-between, but very, very easy to install. All right, everybody. So here I have the drive formatted. This is what it looks like whilst it's formatted. I decided to go with Mac OS Extended Journal 
for this NVMe SSD on the Mac Mini M4. Uh, that's just the preferred file format for this computer so it's only going to work with my Mac Mini and honestly this drive is probably not going to leave the case. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. These are the read and write speeds that I got on the drive and to say I'm disappointed is a little bit of an understatement. Granted, you know, there's no really megabyte per second read and write speed advertised on the Ugreen unit, but roughly at 10 gigs per second, this is what it kind of roughly boils down to. So using those two USB-C ports, you're drawing two power from there for this whole Ugreen setup, and that gives you 10 gigabytes per second on the USB-As, as well as on the internal NVMe SSD, and yeah, that kind of just makes sense. So honestly, for me, um, to go with the Samsung Evo 990 two terabyte drive that has read and write speed capabilities of 5,000 megabytes per second is a little bit overkill. You know, granted, if you take a look at the prices around, you can get varying degrees of, you know, deals on different uh, capacities and then read and write speeds. Um, this is, again, 79 for the one terabyte. Granted, I'm not very upset that, you know, I went with this drive and I'm going to keep it and I'm going to use it. Um, to me, I kind of just think now that I know that this drive is not being used to its full potential and then obviously Samsung has been known to make really good NVMe SSDs and I know that my photos are going to be safe so you know could I have gotten a cheaper 2 terabyte drive that is not quote unquote as powerful as this one correct I definitely could have could I have gotten a cheaper drive that didn't have the capacity that this one has correct I could have this is more for future proofing um, my photos library, again, I've been shooting photos on a Sony mirrorless camera since about 2014, 2015, so I have nearly, you know, in photos, a couple terabytes, well, not a couple terabytes, but, you know, almost one terabyte, so I just want to have all my pictures in one place, I wanted it on a good drive, knowing that this drive is really just chilling, it's not getting pushed to its max, knowing the limitations, the expectations of this um, Ugreen setup with this NVMe SSD. I'm not going to be running Mac OS. I'm not going to be booting from this drive. If that's your goal, I think you should look elsewhere for external SSD housings, etc., etc. Um, again, with this Ugreen, I just want it to have more ports and I wanted to have this storage here that I can use as a go between. And then again, for larger, faster tasks, I'm just going to use the desktop and the internal SSD that comes with the computer. So yeah, I just wanted to hop on and give you guys just a quick little demonstration and, and overview of the Ugreen um, enclosure. I, I think that for me, this is going to be perfect. I never have to really think about this computer and the ports or lack thereof ever again now. And I've got my two terabytes ready to go and it literally just adds you know, maybe an extra inch of height on my desk. And yeah, I'm going to keep using it, but I'm very, very pleased for $69. I wish the drive would have been faster because, again, I invested in a high-speed, high-quality drive, but at the end of the day, it's not really the end of the world. It's going to use, it's going to be useful for exactly what I want. Now, you know, again, your results may vary, your miles may vary, maybe one terabyte is going to be more than enough for you, so this is not going to cost you that that much, but I hope this video is helpful for you guys, again, the write speeds and the read speeds are right there, and yeah, I think that I'm going to be very happy with this device. Thanks for watching guys, Blazing Tech, and we'll catch you on the next one.